<laughs> I love this time of year. Oh, bloody brilliant! <laughs> Hoi there! If you're new to the channel, I'm Heidi and I live and work aboard my canal boat home, the Rum Wench. I also have a little camper van for those land adventures and this is my little rescue dog, Bonnie, who feels she can take on the world. So I'd love it if you joined a middle-aged woman and a dog faffing about in search of adventure, fun and giggles. Hey up everyone, it's another blustery horrible day today but we do need to leave because A, I've got the tunnel booked, the Harecastle tunnel in the next few days and also I want to visit a few things before we go through the tunnel which means moving so hopefully we're going to get to the potteries today and then move on to Westport Lake if there's space because it's good walks for Bonnie because there's not really many walks along here yeah so what a nice good walk oh but it's, it's horrible and again today I'm going to be travelling with my friend Nikki on the boat in front who's also a single-handed boater. And as soon as we've set off it's started to rain already. Oh, I love this time of year. Oh, bloody brilliant! One of the best things about this time of year is most of the two day moorings go to 14 days which is fantastic so you can stay at pretty popular spots for longer because there's not many boats cruising this time of year because they've all got scents and gone into marinas and that's great so don't move so often over winter I only move once a week or once a fortnight because I'm very busy with all my badge orders I have a lot of schools on my books so I do all their orders for the new terms and things I do all my naughty Christmas badges, so so work-wise, plus cruising in horrible weather is not very enjoyable. So I'll only probably cruise maybe two or three hour days once a week or once a fortnight instead of doing eight hour days more often. Yeah, well I'm heading to home waters now and I can't wait to spend time with my family and my friends there. So with all the leaves falling into the water, you often get them round your propeller. So I often do a short blast in reverse to try and get them off. But I do think I've got something round my prop anyway, because my engine's a little bit smoky today. And the thing is with my propeller is A, I've got a big deep draft on my boat, so it sits quite low in the water and my propeller's huge. It's about this size. On my old boat, it was a little one like this. So a quick blast in reverse would clear it really easily but on this propeller, because it's so big, I tend to get things wrapped all around it plus I've got a rather large shaft. So I get things around my shaft as well, very tightly, especially fishing wire and plastic bags. So I do have to go into my weed hatch quite often on this boat, whereas my old boat, I hardly ever went in it. Yeah, it's a big difference. It's not always good having a big one all the time, you know. I do love seeing all the old mills and buildings from back in the day. A lot of them are derelict now or been converted into flats. But this one here, even though it's a bit of a rundown, <laughs> you can see where they used to load all the boats from. The thing that sticks out across the water, they used to load all the boats there. So this is the Middle Port Potteries and it's a very blustery windy day today and I'm trying to double more alongside Nikki but when you've got the wind blowing at you from all directions it can be quite a bit of a faff. double moored alongside Nikki and we're going to go now and explore the Middleport Potteries.
And this is an example of one of the work boats that would have carried the potteries back in the olden days. Because remember, James Binley and Josiah Wedgwood built this canal just for mostly transportation of potteries because they're all getting broken by horse and cart on the bumpy roads. Yes, yeah, so you would have loaded everything up here and then driven it and the boat people would have lived in this section here. So these boats weren't just carrying the potteries, they were also carrying all the raw materials needed and obviously as well all the fuel for the factories. So you can imagine it, can't you, with a horse and cart going along all these bumpy cobbles. Yeah, it's bad enough when I'm riding my bike, although I quite enjoy it. What I love best about walking down these little cobbled streets and narrow passages is you just feel like you're back in the olden days. So the city of Stoke has been shaped by its production of pottery for centuries and it's known as the home of the pottery industry in England and the whole area here is often just referred to as the potteries. So the weather's just suddenly now gone absolutely glorious. So that's the sort of outside of the Middleport potteries. You can pay and go inside and go into more things. But we haven't got time to do that, unfortunately. So whilst the weather's gone nice now, we're going to crack on and try and get ourselves a place at Westport Lake. And I tell you what, we just timed that well because a big school party's just arrived. <laughs> yeah, but you can pay to go inside. It's seven pounds to go inside and visit all the inside stuff. But yeah, we just want to crack on now. because uh, It stopped raining and because it stopped raining, we've got a little bonnie on the roof. <laughs> just stopping here because I'm desperate for coal I've only got one bag left so I'm just gonna more up here and get some coal that's brilliant hey up and that's the coal yeah All right, all right, well, thank you anyway. Yeah. I've got one bag. I'll... Oh, no, you're all right, love. I'll sort some of out, but thank you very, very much. See you later. Oh, they'd run out. <laughs> and that lovely boater then on a boat just offered me some logs if it was cold. <sighs> the boating community are just, I'm just overwhelmed. So lovely. Look at this little boat here. How cute's that? How cute! Oh! Luckily, the coal boat's due in a few days, so I'll be able to manage till then. And again, here we've got another one of them bottle kilns. I mean, Stoke is just an amazing place if you like all the history. And I love the fact that they're keeping these here, they're preserving them. Because after all, it's all part of the heritage, isn't it? Stoke is just steeped in all of this from back in the day, all the industry. It's wonderful. So I've just moored up here at Westport Lake and I've done my old trick where I moor up and then realise I can't shut my flaps. So I need to untie my ropes again and then shut my flaps and everything's good. This only usually happens when you're on a bank like this that's higher than the gunnels. But there we go, it's easy fix.
So it's a really blustery, horrible day out there today. And tomorrow we're going through the Hare Castle Tunnel. It's all booked and that's quite long, dark and very moist. I'm taking you with me, obviously. Anyway, I just wanted to show you this with the fire. Lots of people have been asking me, what's that cage thing in my fire? And it's called a coal cage. Now, some people don't get on with them. I absolutely adore mine. I've got one in my boatsman's cabin fire and one in this fire. And the way it works is you can just stack it up with coal and it sort of feeds itself gradually throughout the day. Now, I found that great being on my own, so I'm cruising, doing boat jobs, out adventuring and walking, things like that. And it just keeps the fire just ticking over. Lovely. Now, the trick to it is you've got to get it roaring. All your coals red hot, then restack it and then just leave it then to simmer all day and it keeps my boat really nice and warm obviously if you're using logs then they won't fit in with the coal cage in but i find it's great and it's quite economical as well because i've got a big box rude big fire box so if i was stacking that with coal it use a lot more so for those that have been asking it's a coal cage anyway we've got the tunnel in the morning so i'll see you then So today we're due to go through the Hare Castle Tunnel at 10 o'clock. I've just been on a very moist walk with little Bonnie, but she loves it. She loves all the new sniffs and exploring all the new places. Yeah, she doesn't like the rain though, but she's had a lovely time. I don't know if you've noticed, I've got my Christmas tree up, but my lights aren't working. I need some batteries and there's nothing worse than running out of batteries. So I need to get some of them, but the tree's up. Anyway, I'm going to do my engine checks now and we'll get cracking. <laughs> So Hare Castle Tunnel is 1.6 miles long and it used to be the longest in the country. However, Standage, which I've also been through, is the longest and the deepest. And that's when I did the Huddersfield Narrow and went up and did the Rochdale a few years ago. And that was an amazing experience. But you are in the tunnel for nearly three hours. However, this one, I think it's about 45 minutes. But it does go quite low in sections so i have put my low chimney on that my dad made me and i will be doing quite a bit of ducking oh the joys so after seeing all the old mills and the bottle kilns and then you see modern factories like this they're just awful aren't they i bet they won't be standing in a hundred years time we just don't build things to last anymore do we such a shame. weed hatch, one sec. So just whilst we've got 10 minutes, I'm gonna go my weed hatch because I've noticed I'm quite smoky and that's normally a sign. <laughs> So this water is really, really cold and I don't initially wear gloves when I go in the weed hatch because the biggest thing that I often get caught around my propeller or my shaft is fishing wire and I can't feel that through gloves. But if I do find there's something large like rope and things like that, then I will then put my gloves on to get through the rope with a knife. So I've just been in the weed hatch and there's nothing around it. And this gentleman's just checking that my horn and my light's working. Oh, it's all exciting. <coughs> So with all the safety checks done, it was time to go. So remember, I'm going to be in this tunnel for about 45 minutes. And we're off and you'll notice here that there's a height barrier. So because the roof goes so low, you've got to make sure that you clear this height barrier. Me and 
Mickey both get in this tunnel, they will shut the doors behind us and put the extractor fans on. So we don't get smoked out by our own engines. So as you can hear now, that roar is the sound of the fans coming on. So that means Nikki must be up my rear. So let's have a little glance back and check she's in. There she is. <laughs> and I like to have a little torch like this at the back with me, so I can see the arch of the back. This is actually the second tunnel built. The first one was built by James Brindley and that's next to this one. But it had a few problems with filling with water and they had to get pumps and it was saved by the railway, the steam railway. But there were a few design faults. And then later, Thomas Telford, that genius, he then built this one. But it does get lower and lower as you go through it. <laughs> and some people believe it's haunted. But if you remember on this Trent and Mersey Canal, I did a video about the rape and murder of Christina Collins, which happened further down the canal near Rugeley. If you haven't watched that video, please do. I'll put a link in the description. But because she travelled to this tunnel with those boatmen that raped and murdered her, people get the stories mixed up and say her ghost haunts the tunnel. So have a look out, see if you can see any ghosts. Other people say there's a headless bog that patrols the tunnel. And other people say that the amount of people that died and had accidents when they were building these tunnels, they also haunt them. So look out. It goes quite low here. This is where you get covered in spider poo and tunnel jizz. Oh, look at it. I don't know if you can see me, but bloody hell, it's low now. Oh. I don't like it when it goes this low, it's going to go even lower. Oh. These yellow markers here are a warning that the tunnel profile's getting lower. And at the moment, I'm doing a lot of ducking. So it went really low there then, that was awful. I got tunnel jizz on my hat. <laughs> So back in the olden days, they used to leg it through these tunnels and that means they used to lie on the roof on planks and use their legs to get through the tunnels before boats were motorised. Yeah, fascinating, eh? So that skeleton is Captain Bones, but a lot of people call him Sid. So after about 40 minutes, there it is, the light at the end of the tunnel. So that's it, that's the tunnel done. And you'll notice all this water's orange and that's because of the iron deposits that are around here. So with the tunnel out of the way now, this is the start of Heartbreak Hill or the Cheshire Locks is his proper name. And a lot of these locks are in pairs. So because I'm still traveling with Nikki, we can make that a bit quicker because we can set both locks. This is also the turn to the Maxwell Canal, which I adore and have been on many, many times. So I'm gonna start now, more up and set these locks. Some of them are not working, so you just gotta make the best of it. <laughs> so like I said before, all these locks are in pairs so I can open up all four paddles and then both me and Nikki can go down together. Don't be rude, I mean the boat. <laughs> I'm 
just whilst I'm faffing on these locks, I just want to give a big shout out to Todd and Jonathan David Bell for becoming supporters of the channel via Patreon. Thank you. So having the pairs of locks is great because I've just come down, shut my own gate, Snick is coming down. So it's quicker because when we're both single handing and then we keep setting the lock against each other, it's a pain in the bum. We're not going to be doing the whole flight today, just two or three locks and then hopefully get herself moored at Red Bull. That's good timing, there's a boat coming, so we've got one more lock now and then we're mooring up for the day if we can get a space. But there are bins and water there and I've had my washing machine on. So I'm going to top up the water, get rid of my rubbish and then it'll be rum time. So this is the last lock and it's only a single one so me and Nikki will help each other down this one. in lodges. Look at that. Woohoo, can you see it? I'm just grabbing thing. Absolutely covered in it. So with the locks out the way we then reach the services. So we've come through Hare Castle, made it down three locks and we're here now at the service point. We've just got rid of all our rubbish. We're filling up with water now because I've had my washing machine on. Yeah, and then we're gonna, hopefully gonna moor just before the lock down here. This straight now takes me to my mum and dad's and it's uh, there's about 30 odd locks, but yeah, it takes me there. So I feel like I'm on the home straight. I'll be home for Christmas. But we have noticed that the services here are closed. So there is a place to empty your toilet here. There's bins and there's a water point, but the other services are closed, such as showers and laundry and all that. And the thing is, all the boat licenses are going up 25% over the next few years. Then the continuous cruisers goes up another 25%. So the licenses are going up a lot. And all I'm finding as I'm cruising around the system is so many services and bins removed or not working so it's not not good that if you're paying all this extra money you want well i want jacuzzis i want jacuzzis at every water point and a sauna yeah so it's not looking good anyway we're here and i'm on the home stretch So we're having a classic Sailor Jerry's today, but I don't like this neat. I tend to have this with a mixer. And just whilst I am pouring this, just a massive thank you to this week's pirate crew. So I'm mixing this today with Tropical Crush from Aldi or Lidl, one of them, but it makes it so lovely. So I'll tell you what, I've earned this today, but we're now officially, we're on the home stretch. I've still got a long way to go and over 30 odd locks, but I will, the way I'm going, make it to my mum and dad's for Christmas. So cheers, woohoo, just wet the lips. Mm. Oh, look at that. Mm. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, so if you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up, it really helps. Subscribe down below and then you'll never miss a video. Oh, nail biting stuff this. But just before I go, just a massive thank you to my lovely, gorgeous patrons. 
anyways take care stay safe and i'll see you next week